In this video demonstration, I'm going to show you how I use Blender to create this animation. Showing the assembly of a AA battery charger. So this is playing back in real time in the Blender material viewer and I'm just going to show you the final rendered version. So I'm going to try my best to go as quickly as possible to explain how I model each of these 3D elements and also how I manage to rig them and apply the materials and also set the animation and keyframes. So before I start to build this uh, charger, the first thing I need to go to do is to go online and look for references. Okay, so for the uh, for this particular example, I need to model a solar AA battery charger. And one thing you need to do is to go and search for using the right keywords. You'll be able to find many many different examples. And one of the designs that I'm inspired by is uh, something like this: okay, a foldable solar panel with a charger. That comes along it so the first thing that I wanted to build is the the charger itself so now the charger is quite straightforward it's just a box with uh, four batteries inside and uh, and it has a clear cover so let's start by building that first now before I build this I also need to get the dimensions of a AA battery so just gonna look for AA battery dimensions and you should be able to find images detailing you or showing you the size of the image. So go ahead and download one of these images and go and bring it into Blender. So I'm going to restart this and I'm going to get rid of the default cube. I'm going to turn on my uh, shortcut keys presentations. So this uh, additional plugin that I've installed, the show shortcut, uh, shortcut VUR. So I'm going to put this on the left hand side so that you can see uh, the key presses that I've done. So I'm going to get rid of the default uh, cube and I'm going to bring in the uh, the image. Alright, so first you go to Shift A, go to Empty and select the empty image. And then I already downloaded an image, so you go to the empty uh, properties here and then go and open up the battery image. So I'm going to search for my downloads. And I have the dimensions of the battery here. Okay, so so first I'm going to model this battery, and uh, before I do that, I'm going to rotate this image plane RX90 and RZ90. I'm going to put it on the side view and just push it to the side. I'm going to just press G followed by Z and bring this up. And I'm going to switch to the side view now before I do that I want to push this reference image back in the ZX uh, in the x-axis so press GX and push it back press number three on the number pad or press tilde key to go to your right view and then we're gonna create a cylinder to match the dimensions of this reference so I'm going to go to the properties of this image and enable use alpha in the properties and reduce the opacity so that I can see through the grid lines then I'm going to press uh, G followed by Y in this case to bring this right about the center line uh, or here. So right now I'm going to create a new cylinder. So Shift A, I'm going to go to Mesh and then choose Cylinder. I'm not going to use need so many sides here for this cylinder. So for cylinder, I'm just going to use about 24 sides rather than the uh, 30, uh, 32 in default. And the uh, radius, I'm going to reduce it down until it is more or less matching the radius of the reference. Now if you want to adjust fine steps, hold down to shift key, left mouse click on the radius to uh, adjust the size. And then I can uh, then bring out this slim cylinder. So press G followed by Z. Then I'm going to move it about in the center here. 
I'm going to press this command Alt Z so that I can go to uh, X-ray mode or you can click on the button here press tab to go to edit press S followed by Z to scale down the selected vertices okay press tab again to go back to object mode I'm just gonna press G and followed by Z to move it until my uh, cylinder matches uh, roughly the dimensions now if you want you can adjust your background I'm gonna press G followed by Y just gonna move it into place right in the center line so now I click on my cylinder I'm gonna rename this I'm gonna call it AA battery and then go to edit mode scale along the z-axis and I think right now I'm happy with the, the shape so right now I just want to extrude the top to create the uh, the metal contacts of the battery so go over here go just middle mouse click and drag to go to the perspective view press tab again to go to edit mode hold down to your alt key and left mouse click to select this loop around and hold down the same thing again or you can press number three to go to face selection mode holding down the shift and select the bottom face once that is done press this command Control b Control b and then move your mouse slowly to the right until you get a nice bevel All right just a little bit bevel like that and then give about three segments okay and then adjust the offset okay let me just undo that again Control b and uh, the offset okay so the offset you just have to adjust it a little bit. now the offset is very very small so I need to hold on to my shift key and adjust hold on shift key and click and adjust otherwise it will jump up like uh, what you've seen earlier on so I think the corners are now rounded enough now I want to create the con contact point on top so I select the top face make sure you're in face mode press number 3 if you're not then press I to inset then basically uh, extrude the face within the face and then after that press E to extrude another portion out and then you have your battery and I'm going to apply another bevel again so control B and just bevel this so right now I've got a rounded edge okay so for the bottom I'm going to select the bottom face press tab to go to edit again and then I'm going to press I to go inwards and then press E again to extrude a little bit out and then control B again to bevel to bevel the bottom part of the battery okay I'm gonna press Alt Z to get out of x-ray mode and now I have my battery and I'm gonna apply a smooth shading because right now it's uh, very faceted so right mouse click and smooth shade it and then go over to the properties here and then apply a auto click under the normals apply an auto smooth so we have our first battery created and we are going to duplicate uh, four pieces of this battery so that we can use it as a uh, size reference to build our uh, charger box so with the battery created I'm going to select the battery in object mode I'm going to rotate it along the x-axis in 90 degrees right and then I'm going to duplicate uh, another three more so press Alt D okay Alt D is a reference of the original duplicate uh, with reference press Alt D and then you follow your cursor and in this case I'm going to press X so I'm going to lock it in the X axis then I'm going to hold on to control okay right now control doesn't snap uh, the snapping is too far so I'm just going to try holding down the shift and control and then the distance between the snap is still too big so I think I'm just going to eyeball it I'm going to just put this at a with a gap like that here and then uh, Alt D again take note of the distance that move is 0.149 maybe I'm just gonna increase it to 0.150 okay 0.15 okay so I'm going to duplicate again so Alt D and then press X and then 0.15 Alt D press X 0.15 alright so now I've got uh, four batteries that are evenly spaced so what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine now before I combine these uh, together I'm going to quickly apply some uh, materials to it so that all of them will have the same materials now you can go over to the material tab here and click to create a new material I'm going to select the original battery 
and then I'm going to click on new material so right now the material is a default white material now if you scroll down to the bottom I have this thing called the PBR materials enabled so if you want the P to install the PBR materials add-on go to your edit preferences and and go to the add-on section and go online to this site to download all right go to this 3dwoo.com products materials HTML or you can Google for PBR materials blender then you should be able to find it in the first link so click on this and click on download to download this zip file so download it and once you've downloaded it in your uh, download folder is under PBR materials dot zip go over to blender and click on install look for the zip file do not unpack the, the zip file look for the zip file in this case I already installed mine and then just click on install add-on so once you've installed the add-on if you look under the PBR make sure that this option is checked so the PBR methods will give you a lot of nice presets so you don't have to come over here and play with these sliders here so I'm just going to give a, a multi material uh, assignment to these objects so I'm gonna to, uh, to this battery so I'm gonna select the battery first I'm gonna give it a PBR material uh, I'm gonna assign it with a uh, dielectric and I'm just gonna use a car paint material on it now if you want to see the material uh, shown on your viewport you have to press Z and then choose the material preview so now notice when I apply to the first battery the rest of the batteries are also turned into this blue color now I want to select the faces on the contact so that it has a metallic material so to do that okay go uh, go over here and click on plus scroll out and click on plus and create a new ma uh, material slot and scroll downwards and we're going to choose a metal and this time I'm going to choose a silver metal but so far we haven't applied any silver material onto the uh, battery yet because we need to go to edit mode press tab to go to edit mode then I'm going to select this face then I'm going to press this command control number pad plus to increase selection control number pad plus if not if you don't have the number pad you can always click on select and grow selection select more and click on this one so this is the same function and then after that we can select the material we want to assign and click on assign and now uh, we have the metal pass and then what about the metal base here so go to uh, face selection mode and select this face and again control number pad plus to increase selection until you select all the faces that you want to become the silver contacts select the material and then assign so now we have created our batteries and we can build our charger around these uh, four batteries so we can actually combine these four batteries together by selecting all of them left mouse click and select all of them and press the command control J control J so when when you press control J you notice that the pivot point is not right in the center so to change the pivot point in the center right mouse click set origin to geometry right so now this is treated as a single object right so it just makes a uh, moving this around a little bit easier and later we're going to use this for a boolean operation to create the cavity of the charger so first I want to create the cradle that uh, carries this battery now the reference that I'm uh, going for are these uh, battery chargers here like, like this one right so I'm going to model something that looks like this okay so I'm going to create a cube first so shift shift A and then go to mesh and create a cube right and then I'm going to scale this cube down uh, go and edit mode and then just scale this cube down and then go back to object mode press G followed by Z and then move the cube and also move the battery G followed by X and then I'm just going to move it I'm going to the top view here G X and then move it until it is lined up okay right now I my shortcut keys are being hidden let me just readjust this one uh, right at the center here okay and uh, to go to the top view you just press tilde key and go to top view all right so now I'm gonna select the cube go to edit mode by pressing tab and then press S to scale up slightly 
until it encompasses the battery. All right, and then I'm gonna press S followed by Z to just flatten it a little bit. Okay, so what I'm doing here is that I want to create a uh, a box right that can cradle the four batteries. So uh, going back to object mode again, I'm just gonna press G followed by Z and then just bring it up until it sort of like captures the battery uh, about halfway through like that. Okay, so once that is done, we're gonna create a boolean operation. So basically, I want the box to subtract the geometry of this battery. So select the cube first. I'm gonna rename the cube the cradle or battery cradle. And then apply a boolean operation. Okay, I gave it a new material for the time being, but uh, to do a boolean, you need to go to the modifier uh, properties and apply a boolean. Okay, and pick the object that you want to subtract, in this case, the battery. So click on the eyedropper and then select the battery. All right, and then hit apply. So now you will have, if I move the uh, cradle down, you can see the cavities that is being subtracted from the battery. Okay, so I'm, going, I'm just gonna make all these cavities a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna go to edit. Okay, and I'm gonna select the uh, faces inside or actually I'm going to select the outer faces first so to select the outer face what I did was move my cursor over the edge here and alt left mouse click so this loop will now be selected then press uh, use the non-uniform scale you can use the scale icon here and then you can grab the blue the blue icon here to scale it non-uniformly so just make the cradle a little bit bigger okay and then I'm just going to try to see whether I can okay now I need to isolate this object so to isolate it select and click on your uh, forward forward slash on your uh, number pad okay if not you can click on view uh, view local view this is the same command all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all these uh, battery cavities and then try to make it make them slightly bigger so I'm gonna go to uh, x-ray mode alt z and then I'm going to select all the vertices within this section here. Okay, holding down the shift to add on selection. Let me just press Alt A to deselect first and then just left mouse click and create a box over the vertices. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just slightly scale them a little bit wider, a little bit bigger, a little bit wider. All right. So that there is a gap later on when I put in the battery. So to get out of the isolate select, you just go to local view and then toggle isolate select. So now I can press G followed by Z and then you can see the batteries. There's a gap over there. Now I need to adjust a the batteries a little bit. So I'm going to go to edit mode and then I'm going to press L to select this battery. Now th remember this battery is a single object. So, uh, so all these four are single object but four separate elements. So I'm going to press Alt A to deselect first because there are some faces being selected here. Now to select linked object, hover the cursor over the battery and press L and press G followed by X to move the battery into place. Alt A, then L to select this linked bat uh, faces again, then just G followed by X and then just move it into place. I'm going to switch to the top view and then press Alt A to deselect. I think this battery, I need to move this one. Hover over the vertices, press G, and then press uh, X to move it along the X axis. Then press L to select this one. Now I want to deselect this one, so press Alt A. I only want to select this one, press L, and press G, followed by X to move the batteries into place. Okay, so now I got my cradle, I got my uh, batteries in, and I can start to build the uh, the case around this uh, this charger. All right, so um, I'm going to try to extend uh, by. I'm going to create a slightly different uh, version of this this charger uh, as opposed to my original one. So I'm trying to see what are the possibilities that I can do to uh, create the the charger. So 
So I think I want to start by building another cover around it. So I'm going to create another cube. So Shift A and go and create another cube. And this will be the cover. So I call it battery charger body. So this will be the main battery charger body. Then I'm going to go to press tab to scale it down first and press tab to go back to object mode again. Press G followed by Z so that it encompasses the batteries and the cradle. Okay, I'm going to press G followed by Z and move it until uh, it is a tight fit. Go to edit mode again. Press tab. Press S followed by Z to scale it down so that you can see the cradle and the battery is within this uh, this casing. So I'm going to press S followed by Y to scale it along the Y axis. I'm going to go to object mode, press G followed by Y to push it forward. And then now I need it to be wider. I'm going to press Alt Z to go to uh, Alt Z to go to X-ray. Right now I'm still in X-ray mode. I need to go to solid mode then I can see it a little bit better. S followed by X right now to scale it until it encompasses the, both the cradle and the batteries. Okay, I think this is good enough. We can put the, a charger from, from this. Uh, I'm going to press G followed by Y, push it forward a little bit. Maybe I will, for the cradle, the face here, press number 3, G followed by Y, I'm going to push the face in a little bit. Okay. So just make sure you scale everything within inside then i can now select this uh, cradle and or rather the body and i'm just gonna round it off a little bit okay by selecting all the edges um going to edit mode and i'm gonna go to edge mode then i'm gonna press a to select all the edges and i'm gonna round it off by applying a bevel so press ctrl b and then i'm just gonna apply a bevel Okay, and then I think this bevel can will need a little bit more uh, subdivisions. Now you notice the bevel looks a little bit uneven because this is due to me scaling the op the cube while it is in object mode. So you notice that I will scale my object mostly in edit mode rather than object mode. So when I accidentally scale it in object mode non uniformly, this is uh, this is a problem that will appear. So let me just undo, and I need to go to object mode select the object and if you look at the item itself you can see uh, this is what is causing the problem i accidentally scaled it along uh, the x-axis earlier on uh, without going to the edit mode so i need to fix this by applying a command called applying the scale so select the, the body and press ctrl a then i'm going to apply the scale so that will reset everything to one so now if i go to edit mode again with all the edges selected i can now apply a bevel and then the bevel should be all even around. So control B, then now you can see we have a nicer looking bevel. Okay, so once you you apply the bevel, you have you can actually still adjust it here by clicking on the bevel here. And I'm gonna increase the number of segments so that it's a little bit rounder. Uh, give it about six segments. I think this is good enough. And then um, I'm going to adjust the profile a little bit. I can make it bounce out a little bit more. You can also holding down the shift and left mouse click to adjust the offset so they can control the size of the uh, bevel. Okay, this one looks a little bit boxy but I think uh, it will work for me so I'm happy with this so I'm gonna leave it as it is and now I'm gonna press ctrl R and then insert one edge loop and then uh, put the edge loop here so I need the edge loop here because later I'm gonna select these group of faces I'm gonna detach them and to form the cover and then next I need to uh, split this in the middle by inserting an edge loop so control R and left mouse click to insert one edge loop here okay now the cradle okay you, you can see now the cradle itself is uh, sticking out of the casing so we need to do some adjustments so we can go to the top view and then go to edit mode and we are going to press 1 to activate vertex mode and I'm going to press Alt A to deselect everything first then select this two verti uh, vert four vertices and then these other four vertices so total eight vertices are selected then press S followed by X to scale it inwards as tight as we can then grab these uh, vertices at the back press G followed by Y and then bring it back in okay so now 
we have the cradle uh, comfortably inside and uh, we can see the object in solid mode first I'm gonna press Alt Z to get out of uh, shaded mode or x-ray mode rather then I'm going to right mouse click and apply a shade smooth on the casing so select the casing and apply a shade smooth and also go to properties and turn on auto smooth now if you turn on auto smooth and you see these hard edges you can just increase the angle a little bit I'm going to just going to increase it by a few more degrees and then it should smooth out all the hard edges okay so if I think auto smooth might not be necessary if I turn it off uh, I think it looks looks the same okay so I'm going to leave it as it is so you can see here we have the cradle still sticking out so I'm going to select the cradle and I'm going to go to edit mode I'm going to press alt z to go to x-ray I'm going to select the bottom face press number three select the bottom face and press s to scale it down and press g followed by z to push it up okay so we just need to have the cradle there so that it doesn't look empty later on okay so now uh, how do we make the cover for this uh, charging box so since we have the edge edges that are already cut okay all we need to do is just to select the faces that form the cover so go to the side view I'm going to drag a box over the faces that I want to detach as the cover so you can just drag a box over the dots the dots represent uh, one face and then we're going to press the command P okay and then selection and then now we have the uh, cover that is detached all right so now we have a cover as a separate object all right and uh, okay we seem to have some issues over the cradle well we're going to fix the shading later on but right now we have separated the uh, the main body the cover from the main body so I'm going to select the cover I'm going just going to call this cover battery charger cover just by clicking the name on the outliner here and also I want to reposition the pivot so that it can uh, open up in the correct axis so right now if I try to press RX it will not uh, rotate in the correct pivot so I'm going to go to edit mode then press number two go to edge mode select this edge all right uh, press this command shift s shift s and then go uh, cursor to select it move the cursor here first then go back to object mode by pressing tab right mouse click set origin to 3d cursor so now the orange dot of the cover has shifted to the 3d cursor so when i press r followed by x it will rotate accordingly so i'm going to just rotate this up for the time being and then take a look at the uh, the batteries and the cradle so I'm gonna press uh, alt Z to get our object mode I'm gonna see what's the problem here okay so you can see the cradle right is you can see that it is very separated from the rest of the box so what we can do to fix this is also the shading you can see here there's some weird shading uh, problems going with the cradle okay that's because we need to apply a auto smooth all right and then we don't have this weird shading uh, that's going on okay so we are going to uh, resize the cradle okay so that it will uh, fit the charger nicely so I'm going to isolate the object by pressing forward slash I'm going to select the bottom face in fact I probably I'm going to just press G followed by Z and bring the bottom face up as high as I can okay, I'm going to press forward slash again in my number pad and then I'm going to select the battery and the cradle both of them shift select the cradle press G followed by Z and then put them as low as I can get until it's lined up all right and I think this is good enough and right now you can see our cover and our casing is a little bit on the thin side so we can apply a solidify modifier apply a solidify modifier and then adjust the thickness until the okay, click and until it touches the edges of the cradle okay and for the cradle the front part here maybe I'll choose the face and I'll just cut here and extrude the face up to cover this section here so what I can do is go to edit mode Control R. Okay, at this stage, I don't think I can apply edge loop here because there's a multi-sided face here. So um, again, I'm going to use my isolate by pressing forward slash again. 
and press number three select the front face here okay and I'm going to flatten it first along the Y axis so press S followed by Y followed by zero to flatten it and then I'm gonna press E to extrude another face outwards like that the reason is I want to select this face and I'm just gonna extrude it out so that I can cover the edge up I'm gonna press forward slash to get out of isolate select and now you can see I have covered the part nicely all right now I'm gonna select the casing again and now we have some weird shading errors so we are going to the uh, uh, object data and then enable the normals and turn on auto smooth to fix that shading uh, issues okay that appeared when we cut the uh, cover away from the, uh, the the main charger body itself so for the cover right now I want to want it to rotate back uh, to its original value if you press N and for Norway you can go to the item properties and you can reset this back to zero again simply by hovering your mouse over the values and pressing backspace and then it will hover back again and for this cover I'm going to apply the same solidify uh, modifier as well okay so I'm going to use it as the same the same values okay uh, as the previous setting for the cover and for the shading after I applied the uh, solidify I need to turn on auto smooth okay so if I were to rotate this along the x-axis rx and then bring it up now you can see that our cover has a thickness to it all right so now we can start to apply uh, some materials onto our charger so I'm going to select the main uh, body go over to the material settings and click on new go over to the PBR materials and then maybe I'll just apply a plastic material okay, to see what it looks like you have to press Z and then go to the materials preview and then for the clear uh, casing I'm going to click on cover also apply a new material okay I'm going to call it uh, you can give your material names as well by like plastic cover and then uh, I'm going to use a preset I'm going to use a transparent object but right now you can see the transparent object doesn't really it's not really transparent because for Blender's EV you need to go over to the um, the settings of EV alright the uh, the scene settings and then you need to activate screen space reflections okay, you need to turn it on then go back to the materials itself and you need to scroll down and then uh, turn on this uh, screen space refraction okay and then you need to adjust the refraction value until it start to become transparent okay so I'm just gonna adjust this okay, to see through I'm gonna bring the rotation of this back again and I'm just gonna try to apply a very small value okay sometimes the if you can't see the object right it could be due to the scaling so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the cover and because my scale is re uh, relatively small I'm going to uh, maybe change the scale or even uh, maybe don't apply don't apply any thickness any solidify for the cover so let me just uh, temporarily turn it off okay let's just uh, solidify yes I'm just going to turn it off and maybe I want to just scale everything up okay, I'm going to select the material and then I'm going to adjust this again I'm going to do translucency okay I think this is some has something to do with the scaling so I think I will have to scale everything a little bit bigger uh, okay so let's try this I'm going to select um, everything and parent it first to a dummy or a I'm going to parent it to a empty so I'm going to create an empty right and then I'm going to select all the all the items okay except the empty I'm going to select empty at last and then you can see in the outliner here I'm going to select the battery the charger body cover and the cradle then I'm going to hold down to shift and left mouse click and drop it over the newly created empty okay, let's try that again okay so now the empty is the parent you can see the relationship lines and I'm just gonna press S and scale this up okay and then I'm going to unparent 
all of them again hopefully it will inherit the new skill okay so we will still jump back again let me try to control a and apply the scale Okay, and then Alt P, clear the parent and keep the transformation. Okay, so now hopefully Alt P is to clear the parent. I can delete away this now. I can bring this ch charger set up and then just see whether I can still get this to become transparent. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, this is strange. Let me see whether material review is correct. Rendered. Okay, this is funny because I was able to get this transparent in my other scene. Okay, let me see what what setup did I missed up. Yeah, okay. I forgot to open up the screen space, space reflections and turn on refractions. Ah, there you go. Okay, so anyway, uh, that's a mistake on my part. So let's go back to the materials itself and we can adjust the refractions. We can turn down the value so that it doesn't bend the light so much. Okay, and then now we can risk, uh, scale this, rotate this until it's back to its original location. And I think I can give the uh, thickness back again. I can give the uh, solidify give it back the solidification again okay let me just go to shaded solid mode first and rotate it up and adjust the thickness yeah 0 0.1 okay yeah so it's the same value and then let's take a look at the render so now my my charger is more or less done okay so you can refine it by adding a hinge okay but so let's move on by uh, maybe applying another color to the cradle let's go over to the cradle itself and maybe change the base color to something else uh, just to make it stand out and then for this base color I'm going to change it to uh, more of a well it doesn't really matter because later we'll be adding a decal on top of the surface so more or less our charger is done so now we want to create the solar panel uh, to to charge the uh, the batteries or to be connected to the batteries so there are a couple of ways that you can do it now the simplest way would be to just use a single plane okay so I'm gonna move the cursor out here shift right mouse click to move the cursor here and let me go to the top view shift right mouse click to snap it here and the snapping on a turn on temporarily turn it to absolute grid snap and then go to the front view and then shift right mouse click again to select it here all right so now my cursor is in the precise location i'm going to turn off snapping by clicking on this button shift a go and create a plane and this will be my solar panel basis so go to edit mode and then i'm going to press s to scale it up okay so if you want to just create a single plane uh, and use it as your solar panel you may do it uh, because the setup for uh, for my example right re involves uh, rigging now maybe I'll just do one that only uses a uh, tree a tree bone setup okay so first tree bone that means I will have uh, two panels and then a midsection so with this plane I'm gonna, I want to call this panel solar panel Alright, so I'm going to control, uh, go to edit mode and then press control R and then split into three, into three uh, sections. Okay, and uh, then when I cut this into two, uh, these two edges are selected. So I'm going to press S followed by X to, to just bring it in. Okay, and then I, will, I just want to press control R again and then just give it another few more subdivisions like that. Okay and then i'm going to select go to face selection mode select this face and select this face shift to select these two face and then press i to create the solar panel corners okay 
All right, next, I'm going to press A to select all. Okay, and then press E so that it will extrude outwards. Right. So, then I'm, I'm going to press Control R and then I'm going to cut the section in the center like that. Okay, now I want to model the, the center part to be slightly squeezed so that it's, it looks as it looks like it's uh, a flexible connector. So I'm going to select the center faces here. Go to face selection mode, press 3. Then press Alt, left mouse click, Shift, Alt, Shift, Alt, left mouse click. I'm clicking on the edge until these uh, faces are selected. Then press S followed by Z. And then to scale it down so that you have a sort of like a flexible ribbon. Alright. Then these two faces, I'm going to select these two and these two holding down the shift and then just going to press S Z to just scale it down like so. Right. Now, go to vertex mode. Okay, again, this is, uh, I'm designing this on the fly. So, uh, whichever design that you choose you is entirely up to you. So I'm just going to go to X-ray mode by pressing Alt Z so that X-ray mode is very important because if you, you need X-ray mode to select the vertices that are below. So what I did right now is that I just want to um, select the edges here then you can use SX to scale and then make them a little bit wider. Okay, So I'm, I'm creating a simpler uh, two panel solar panel. Okay, and so now I'm going to apply the materials. So I'm just going to adjust a little bit, select these two edges, and press G followed by Z, Z, and then just move them down a little bit. Or to make it easier, I'm going to select these two faces, All right? And then press S followed by Z, zero, so that now these two faces are lined up together in the same plane. Okay, so now these don't look like solar panels yet. So let's give it a material. Let's give it a rubber type material. So let's go to uh, apply a empty material slot and then we're going to scroll down to the dielectrics, click on it and then apply a rubber material. And then for the solar panels, uh, for the temporary stand-in, I'm going to put in a uh, metallic material. So go to edit mode and then go to apply, click on the plus to put in another material slot and then uh, apply a new material and then for the material I'm going to go to metal and I'm going to use a very dark chromium metal as a stand-in for a solar panel for the time being and then just assign okay so now we have a stand-in uh, solar panels okay and our solar panel needs to have a connector so I'm just going to split a couple of faces here Oh, I'm just going to select these group of faces and I'm going to extrude it out. Okay, I'm going to press E to extrude. And then I'm going to apply something called a uh, the loop tools. Now, the loop tools, right, I already installed it. And when I right mouse click and click this, it's already there. To activate the loop tools, go to your preferences and uh, go to add-ons. Then type the search for loop tools and make sure you activate this. This, this loop tools is very, very useful and it's already part of the Blender installation. So you can go to add-ons to enable it. Now right mouse click and then go to loop tools and then I want to change the circle so that this one will have a circular shape and which I'm going to later attach a cable to connect to the charger. All right, so I'm going to extrude this section out. Press E to extrude. Then maybe scale it up a little bit. Press E again to extrude. Then press I to extrude inwards. Okay, I maybe I know be a good idea. You can see that some of the faces are collapsing upon, upon itself. Okay, so you can maybe press I, but just let it go in a little bit while it's still being selected. Press S to scale it uniformly, and then press E again, and then extrude inwards. Okay, so now we have the connector to plug into our charger. All right. So now, how do we make this thing bend and fold? Because this is a single object, and. Uh, Unless you make your panels out of two separate pieces and you adjust the pivot on the side, um, the only way you can actually uh, animate this is to apply a bone and then make it. So I'm going to show you a very quick setup of how I, I did this. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start by creating a archer or a joint. Okay, so make sure that you are aligned uh, with this 
uh, with this solar panel here then go press shift a and then create a armature okay armature is just a bone object right and let me just go to solid mode and maybe it's a little bit easier to see uh, solid mode and then alt z okay so uh, now we have a bone object okay so this one will take a little bit of getting used to if you've never done rigging before now if you go to uh, the if you click on armature uh, data properties here you can actually uh, enable things like the name the name of the bone turn on the bone and if you can click on this one called in front so that this bone will always be rendered in front of the graphics even though it's cut into the object itself so this is very helpful when you are setting up the bones okay so we need to set up at least three bones right so that everything will uh, deform a little bit nicer okay so i'm going to put the bone right at the edge here then i'm going to create another smaller bone here and then another bone for this other uh, panel okay so you can change the display of the bone right now the this is the traditional octa octahedral shape you can also change it into a stick shape okay so i personally prefer this stick shape so it's, it's a little bit easier for me to see what am i doing now now we are in the bones object mode so we can't really change uh the, the shape of the bone so if you want to change the shape of the bone you have to go to edit mode okay so when you're in edit mode you can select the root of the bone and then you can stretch it all the way to the edge so i'm going to change to the front view i'm going to select the root of the bone first then press g then have the bone start from the edge then the tip of the bone grab it and then put it at this section now to create another section of the bone you can just press e to extrude one more section of the bone i'm going to press e and then followed by x so that I know that this is following along the x-axis okay and then we got the second bone which is bone dot zero one then i'm going to press e again to extrude all the way okay to the, the other side so one more time press e and then extrude make sure you only totally create three bones for this example right so i got one two three so once your, your editing is done make sure you get out okay so if you're in object mode you're essentially selecting the whole armature when you want to animate the bones you need to go to a mode called post mode so when you go to post mode the bones right will be in a different color when you choose them okay so now we want to lock the bone so that it will rotate in a uh, particular axis so i'm going to select the root bone then press r y then you notice that the root bone or the parent bone when it rotates the child will follow now we're going to select the middle bone then press r followed by y so you can see only the middle bone is rotating and then we can select the final bone and then you press r followed by y you can see it rotating now technically we can rotate in all axes so what we want to do is that in post mode you can go to the bone properties and we want to lock it to only rotate in the axis that we want so for instance we only want the bone to rotate in the y axis so go to the bone properties first press r followed by y and then you check at the values which are the values that are changing okay it's basically the z and the rotation w so i'm going to right mouse click to go back again that means i do not want to rotate the x and the y so i'm going to just lock this so i'm going to do the same for the rest of the bones x and y i'm going to rotate so x and y i'm going to lock it so now it's all simple matter of whether you are in uh, this view or whichever view you are in when you press r now it's only locked to the axis that you want to rotate so we want to create a rotation action right that's only fixed in the axis that we want because we already locked the x and the y okay we want to lo uh, rotate it in the bones local z axis so now once we have that established um, the next thing we want to do is to we want to rig the mesh or the in this case the uh, solar panel straight onto the bone okay so i'm going to show you step by step how to do it um all right so first you select the mesh but right now we can't do that because we're in post mode so go over and change to object mode first now here's the sequence select the 
mesh first that you want to deform then shift select the armature then press this command control P now this is very important make sure you choose uh, uh, don't choose the uh, with automatic weights don't choose with empty groups but choose with envelope weights when you click and choose with envelope weights right right now if I were to go to post mode right and I try to animate nothing will happen right it is it is the bones are not affecting it right now there is zero value of influence on these meshes so what we need to do is we need to do something called weight painting now before we do some weight painting I want to establish different regions of the mesh so uh, press object mode first and then select the mesh and then press tab to go to edit mode so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the edges of this model so that it can be separated into three sections the mid section the uh, panel one and panel two All right so how do you do that so go to edge mode okay press number two to go to edge mode then hold down to alt and left mouse click to select uh, the edge and alt left mouse click alt left mouse click I'm gonna uh, turn on x-ray mode alt z and alt left mouse click okay alt shift left mouse click okay so now we got this loop selected I'm gonna press this command or you can just right mouse click on it and then mark a seam Okay, we're gonna do the same for the other side I want to try this command select similar uh, select similar length okay so I ended up selecting a lot of other loops which I do not need so I'm gonna uh, try that again so I'm gonna right mouse click to get out then alt left mouse click shift alt left mouse click left mouse click okay, holding down to alt shift left mouse click okay and then right mouse click and then mark a seam now you might be wondering why am I doing this well I'm making my job a little bit easier in my weight painting by painting all these uh, seams we I've effectively separated this model into three different portions okay for this to work you must make sure the seam run continuously until you can see a distinct loop that is being cut all right so now we can start our weight painting so to do your weight painting go to click on the drop down menu and choose weight paint okay so when you're in weight paint you want to go over to the objects uh, data data properties and then you can actually see the different vertex groups when we assign the armature to the mesh model so now we can work on bone uh, bone level for example bone number one I will only want this panel to be affected so now I'm affecting only bone number one and in my weight paint mode I want to use the paint uh, face section for uh, using the face section method for painting the weights and because I already separate into three regions using the seam uh, assign seam method it's very easy to select this region by simply hovering your cursor over this area and pressing L okay now when you press L you notice that this region is is activated for you to paint so we want to paint for bone number bone original bone we're gonna paint at maximum weight at maximum strength so go ahead and start painting it your entire uh, mesh section right should turn red so go to the bottom and do the same thing as well and the good thing about uh, using this method right now you see I can accidentally paint over the other side and it will not be affected so keep on painting this until it turns completely red right so just keep on painting 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 until you hit all the vertices right until everything turns red okay you do not want to see any of the blue color here just left mouse click and drag and paint until we are sure that okay now bone number uh, this is the original bone I'll call it bone zero is now uh, fully affecting this region okay now we can move on to bone dot zero zero one okay now bot, uh, bone dot zero zero one is not affecting anyone okay now this area is still active now I do not want bone 01 to be affecting this panel so I'm, I'm gonna press shift okay shift K okay shift K to okay I made a mistake let me undo control Z right I'm going to uh, press shift L okay to deselect shift L move over here and press L 
to activate the region okay now bone number one is now selected then I can go over here and I can press shift K okay but you notice something the sides here are also slightly affected um, but okay I'm gonna leave it as it is you'll see what happens later when we start to animate okay now to this section okay right now I'm gonna press shift L to deactivate this region first then go over here and press L to activate this region and go to bone number two and then I'm gonna press shift K and now this entire region is affected okay so shift K is like fill all right basically fill the waves rather than painting all right so now we have done that uh, we're gonna try to animate the bones and see whether it will bend and distort our uh, mesh properly or not so let's go back to object mode and we're gonna select the armature now then go to post mode and then we'll try this bone first I'm gonna try the bone number two then I'm gonna rotate and then see how it works and actually it works pretty well okay and then now bone number two and then rotate this and it's rotating very well as well and of course the final bone we don't really have to rotate it because this final bone will just rotate everything as it is so everything is actually distorting pretty nicely so um, I think this is a success so now I'm just gonna rotate this to fold it up and see what it looks like okay so this looks good so I'm gonna unfold everything so I'm gonna go back to my bone properties then I'm gonna press backspace to reset each of the bones uh, rotation so go and select the bone and then backspace then backspace and now everything has been reset okay so we have our solar panel okay and we have our let me just get out uh, x-ray mode we have our solar panel we have our charger now we need to have the casing all right so before we do the casing we need to have a cable to connect to the um, to the charger itself right so now we can move this right now because the bones are affecting the mesh if we go to object mode and select the armature and we move the armature around you can see that it is actually moving the entire solar panel so I'm going to just press G followed by Y to move it aside and I'm going to create the uh, cable to join the charger to the solar panel All right so your cursor is here so whatever I create will appear here so shift a go ahead and create a curve that's your curve All right and we are going to transform this basic curve into a cable so how do you go about doing that so go over to the properties of this uh, curve All right click on this uh, object properties and go ahead and turn on uh, under geometry and uh, enable this bevel depth Okay, so when you push up the value, you can see. Okay, let me undo that. I don't know what I did just now. Okay. Okay, at this stage, uh, since we've come so far, I forgot to do an important thing that is to save. So I'm gonna save this solar charger version 2. okay so that's important please make sure you save regularly then now shift a and then i'm going to create a curve let's see a curve shift a curve let's see a curve go back to the uh, object properties and then the uh, the bevel depth just increase the bevel depth and you'll notice that right now we've just simply created a cable very very easily and when you go to edit mode you can grab the handles and you can just extend it and pull it around and the best part is you can attach it to uh, a hook okay hook it to an empty and then you can animate the empty now before we do that let's uh, just temporarily uh, attach the cable to the side of this uh, box first so I'm gonna go to object mode by pressing tab holding down the shift right mouse click and then I'm gonna project the cursor onto the surface of this charger then I'm gonna select in edit mode select the curve I'm gonna select the one of the uh, a vertex all right and then I'm gonna press shift s then I'm gonna put selection to cursor all right selection to cursor and so now you can see the cursor will just stick to the the sides like that all right and then I'm just gonna move this around 
Okay, I'm going to reset the center of this pivot, uh, this curve rather, right mouse click and then uh, set origin, origin to geometry so that it is uh, right in the center. Okay. So if you want to create like uh, something like an attachment, you can maybe uh, create a cylinder and then just plug it straight inside here. And uh, which is what I'm going to do since my cursor is here. So I'm going to go to create a cylinder. Okay, a low resolution cylinder, maybe a shelf sided cylinder. And then I'm going to just uh, press G followed by Y. Okay, wait, did I create a cylinder in object mode? Okay, let me check. Right, my cylinder is here. Okay, my cylinder is actually correct. It's, it's in the correct position. It's just it's very narrow. So I need to go to edit mode. Press S followed by Shift Z to scale it up. Then press uh, R, X90. This is in edit mode, but th I think that's fine. And then we have our connector created. Then I'm going to bevel this edge. Go to edge mode, select this edge, and then control B and bevel it. Maybe not so many segments, just a few segments will do. And then apply a mesh smooth to it, auto smooth, and a shade smooth. Okay, excuse me. Now I'm gonna select this. Uh, to edit mode, I'm going to rotate this. In fact, I'm going to just change another property of this. Let me try changing it to a press V to change it into a free so that I can realign this until you got a nice uh, profile like that. All right. Okay, so now I just need to create one more connector to plug into this uh, the, the solar panel here. I'm going to borrow this uh, this connector here that I've just created. Uh, this cylinder, I'm just going to call it connector. Then Shift D, duplicate. And then, just to make it more precise, I'm going to select this curve, press to edit mode, select the vertex, press Shift S, cursor to select it. And then, press tab to go out of object mode, select this uh, connector, press Shift S, then select it to cursor. Okay, this is how you align objects. Then I can now select this connector section and then press A, another uh, bevel. Okay, so now that it is in locate in the same location. And then for this, I'm gonna have a socket coming out from the end here. Press number three, select the end face here, and then press E to extrude. Then I'm gonna press I to insert. Then press E again to extrude. So now we have a power connection cable. Okay, so I'm going to apply a dark color to this. You can click on the drop down since we have a lot of uh, like rubber materials already. So you can click on the drop down and then choose the existing materials. Alright, so this one is a metallic material. I'm going to choose this one. And then for the tip here, I'm going to select the faces. Okay, now if you feel that you cannot zoom in anymore, you can reset your zoom by going to uh, pressing tilde key and click on view selected. This will reset the zoom for you. Okay, so now I'm going to select the inner face here as well. Shift, Alt, left mouse click to select here. Shift, Alt, left mouse click so the inner face loops are selected. Then I'm going to create a new material slot and then I'm going to use some uh, metal. I think it's this one and then I'm going to assign. Okay, so now I got a metallic connector which I can connect but right now none of these are animatable so we need to create a uh, animated hooks so for this uh, white connection connector I'm gonna parent it to the uh, let's create a master handle so that when I move the handles um, everything will follow along with it so I'm going to um, let's see I'm gonna start with the I'm going to move the camera out of the way first. Uh, the lights, I don't need the light. I'm going to delete away the lights. Okay, and then I'm going to create a locator, a master locator. I'll press Shift C to bring the cursor back to its original location. Then press Shift A, create an empty with arrows. And then I'm just going to scale this one up really big. 
Okay, so this will be my handle which I can move things around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these items, all right? And then I'm going to parent it to this uh, empty controller. So I'm going to shift select this as the last one, then press Control P, and then click set parent to object. So now if I grab the grab the uh, empty, I can move, and everything should follow. Okay, the batteries inside are not following. Okay, let's see. Now, you can go over to the outliner to do the operation by simply selecting the batteries. I'm going to select the battery cover as well. Then holding down the shift, left mouse and drag over the parent object. And now, when I move, everything will move. Okay, so the uh, battery reference image, I can hide it. I don't need it anymore. And uh, next is creating the hooks creating the hooks for the power uh, power jack to uh, connect to the to the socket of the solar panel so for that to work first we're going to select the uh, the bezier curve which is showing up as a uh, cable then go to edit mode select the vertex I'm just going to go to wireframe mode so that I can maybe select the vertex a little bit easier okay now with the uh, vertex selected press this command control H and then click on hook to a new object now this uh, there will be a brand new empty that's created okay and then when you move the empty around in object mode it should okay start to deform the curve okay so let's see let me move this around it's not deforming I'm gonna try with this one first edit and select this uh, vertex control H hook to a new object okay and then press tab to get out and then if I select this and then move and you can see the the ends are now moving around okay and with this new uh, handle I can select the uh, connector shift select this uh, locator and then press ctrl P and set that as the parent okay so now when I grab this and move this around okay the connector can be animated okay and let's see can I move this outwards a little bit okay I'm gonna delete this and I'm just gonna try to do the hooking operation again I think I probably selected the wrong object okay and then just wanna move this around make sure that the end is correct yep it is correct and then I'm gonna press Control H hook to a new object now with that selected I can select the go object mode select the okay yeah it works now so now I have the hook established now the hook right I want this hook to be parented to this object here this cylinder so select the hook shift select this connection cylinder then press ctrl P and parent it then for this hook itself I want it to be parented to this master controller so select this hook then shift select the master controller and then press ctrl p and parent so now if i grab the main handle everything should move and then if i want to i can still animate this plug okay so now we are short of one more thing that is the cover right we need to keep all this together all right so we need to have a carrying case so we need to uh, animate all these into a uh, container first. So I'm going to leave the solar panel as it is. Then I'm going to grab this whole group, press G followed by Y, and then put it underneath. All right. And then perhaps the solar, uh, the solar panels. Right. I can select the bone cell, the armature. Then I can press G followed by X until one of the panels is precisely over the charger then press I'm gonna go to solid mode then I'm going to animate the or rather I want to pose the bone so that it is folded together so go to post mode select the bone and then rotate rotate this one about 90 degrees the middle bone and then select bone number two and then just press R and rotate I can simply press R and rotate because remember I can I've already uh, placed the what do you call that uh, 
already locked the other axes. Now, there's one more thing that I want to make this a little bit more realistic because currently the solar panels are still a little bit unrealistic. So let me just undo and I'm going to show you how I can texture map the solar panels. All right. So I'm going to go over to object mode, select the solar panels and then go to uh, material preview. And we really want to put this uh, metallic uh, surface with a solar texture. So how do you go about doing that? So first, we need to do a bit of UV uh, projection. We want to go to UV editing. Okay, let me just go to the object itself. Let's go to top view. I'm going to select these two faces in edit mode. All right, go to number three, select these two faces. All right, and then I'm going to use a projection method so that I can get it at the same proportion. I'm going to press U and then say, um, project from view so I'll get a nice uh, projection of the uh, these two panels now I have the panels ni nicely laid out so right now I can just press I can go to select these two islands these are two islands I can scale them up into this UV layout so what we want to do is want to export this uh, this UV layout into uh, image editing software like GIMP or Photoshop and then I'm going to replace this section with a actual solar panel texture. Okay, so go ahead while this is selected, go and click on UV and export UV layout. I'm going to export this out and call it panel 2, solar panel 2, UV layout, and then export. And then I'm going to go to my uh, GIMP. Okay, remember GIMP can be installed for free. You can go to GIMP.org and download. Uh, your Windows version or your Mac version and install it and we will go and click on file open and we're gonna click on uh, UV layout uh, version 2 let's see uh, I think I placed it Okay, I don't remember where I exported. Let me just check. Okay, so it's in my Blender resource folders. Folder, wrong folder. I should be going to my original one. Yes. There you go. Solar charger, UV layout 2. And you can see a image right with the layout of the panels are there. Okay, so when I export early on, right, if you want a higher quality texture, you should set your export as a 2048 or 2048 so I forgot to do that All right and let me just export that again solar panel 2 UV layout I'll overwrite that and now I'm going to reopen this again okay so this is slightly better resolution and now I'm going to open up another image which is the uh, solar panel uh, texture uh, which I think I found in my downloads folder let's see solar panel pattern this one okay so this is something that I found on the internet so I like this pattern a lot so I'm be using this to replace those uh, solar panels so I'm going to um, use a box select to select this pattern and then go and copy edit and copy then I'm gonna go back to the layout here then I'm press edit paste as new layer and then basically I'm just going to scale this up until it fills up these two areas so I'm going to grab this uh, press M to move move this into place okay and then I'm going to duplicate another one you can right mouse click and then duplicate layer so that I got two pieces and then I'm going to just distort this and fill up this area so press shift T grab and then 
distort this until it matches the size. You can hold on the shift key and then to basically hold on shift key to grab the side handle like that until it fits. Okay, so going down to this one, shift T. And now we got the solar panels uh, filled in. Alright, so once you're ready, go and export as a JPEG or PNG, uh, whichever format you want. I'm going to use export it as a JPEG. I'm going to call this solar panel 2 texture and then export. So now I got a texture for the solar panel. I'm just going to export this uh, default settings. I'm going to go back to Blender and then go back to the layout again. And I'm going to click on the metallic material. So rather than having this metallic material, I'm going to go over to the base color, click on the circle here, and then click on image texture. Then I'm going to locate the new uh, texture that I've created. And then now you can see we have the nice solar panel texture. Okay, maybe here I need to fix this a little bit. So I'm going to go to um, GIMP and then see what's going on. Ah, yeah, I missed a slot here. So go back to the pasted layer, press Shift T, holding down the Shift, and then pull this down until it covers the entire slot. And press Enter. Then go and export again. Uh, go and overwrite the texture, export, replace, and then export and we are done so go back to blend again and then yeah so you can see it's updated no it's not updated yet so let's go to reload the image and yeah so there you go so now we have a nice looking solar panel and we can start to pack everything up so they can keep it inside a box so select the armature press g for by z to bring it down until it is sitting on top of the uh, battery charger then go and select the bones and then start to rotate it until it folds up nicely in post mode so I'm going to grab this bone here and then rotate about 90 degrees and then this one rotate until it folds up of course you don't want to fold it all the way until it cuts through all right so we need to set a key otherwise it will not fold uh, nicely so let me go back to post mode okay so select all the bones I'm gonna select all the bones and then I'm gonna press I and then I'm gonna set a rotation key so right now uh, the bones have uh, have a rotation key that means they will start with this state then for this uh, okay right now I cannot get out of the post mode I need to go up to object mode before I can select other parts like the uh, battery charger then I will set a key so press I I'm gonna set a for now a location okay location key right for this and now we need to model a casing for this two objects so let's go to shift right mouse click go to the cursor and then shift a and create a cube and this cube will become the basis of our case so i'm going to just create a very simple uh, case I'm going to edit mode and then just scale it up and scale it al along the Z axis as Z then uh, Alt Z to go to wireframe mode press Z to go to wireframe mode then go to object mode press G followed by Z and then position it until the cube is encompassing both these objects I'm going to press tab to go to edit mode press S followed by Z to scale it up then press S followed by X to widen it up Okay, until everything is encompassed okay, at least in the front view then in my side view I'm going to press S followed by Y until everything is encompassed and then for the hook here I'm going to select the hook and then I'm going to just press G and then just bring it in so that everything is inside okay so now I can modify this cube to become a case so select the cube, go to edit mode, select all the edges, press Ctrl B and then we're going to create a nice rounded uh, container or more like a hard case. Right, and then we're going to increase the, uh, the profile maybe, maybe the offset so that it, it looks like a nice rounded case. 
Okay, and maybe I just reduce the offset a little bit and the profile. Just reduce it a little bit and okay, everything is nice and compact. So now we want to create a cover so that that can open and close. So we can grab these faces in front here, which will act as the cover. So I'm going to go to face action mode. Uh, before I do that, I need to go to edit mode. Press Alt A to this line. Select the front faces here. And uh, now before I do that, I want to apply a go to object mode and apply a uh, solidify. Okay, so and give it some thickness. All right, so maybe I'm going to go the thickness on up upwards like so. All right. So let's go to solid mode and turn off x-ray mode and we can see everything is inside nice okay I will now go to object mode again select and shape this smooth okay now go to edit mode again and uh, let's go to wait did I select the right object okay I just selected the wrong object Okay, I think solidify because I've uh, extruded it outwards. That's why I can't see my edge loops. Uh, let me see if I can see it. Yeah, in X-ray mode, I can see it very well. So I'm gonna maybe just go ahead and apply my uh, solidify in object mode. Just apply. Okay, so now we have a permanent object. Uh, yes, then we can select the faces or the edges that we can uh, make the cover. So I'm going to select all these group of faces. Okay. First, you go to vertex mode to select. Pressing one to go to vertex mode. Select the vertices that form the tip here. Then press number three. Then you can see. Verify that this is the correct faces that are selected. Then you can press P to separate the selection. So now I can just uh, go to object mode, and then I have two separate parts which can act as a cover. All right. So uh, as usual, you want to select the edge of the separated object here, like, like this edge here. And then I'm going to press Shift S cursor to select it. And because I want to reposition the pivot point of this cover here. So right mouse click and then set the origin to selected. Origin to uh, 3D cursor. All right. So now if I select this cover and I press R followed by X, I can animate this to open and close. Alright, so now I got uh, my carrying case. Okay, it's a, not a, I mean, nothing fancy. Okay, maybe I'll just give it a, a different base color. Yeah, maybe this orangey color. Okay, then this will be good enough. And now we can we can really set up our uh, animation. Alright, so to animate, I'm going to reposition my camera. Right now my camera is looking down this way. We need our camera position properly so that we can render what the camera sees. Okay, I'm going to hide this uh, viewport properties. So I'm going to position my camera roughly here and then press this keyboard combination. Control Alt Number Pad 0. Okay, or you can click on View and uh, Align View and then choose this option. Alright, because I'm in my camera view now, uh, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, work. Uh, as compared to the keyboard so you can zoom in closer so this is the point of view of the camera now if you want to keep your camera view locked to the viewport you can press N go to your view and click on lock to camera view so now I can zoom in and zoom out okay, note, one thing you notice is that as I zoom out the clipping is not showing the uh, object so with the camera selected go to the camera properties and your clipping the end increase it to maybe 1000 meters and now the clipping is gone okay so now we can do our animation now for the animation uh, I anticipate this my last animation is about 15 seconds so 15 times 25 let's do a calculation so 15 times 25 will be 375 so I'm gonna give my scene 375 frames 375 at a frame rate of 25 frames per second 
and uh, we'll be rendering it out into my desktop temporary folder I'm gonna give it a name charger2 underscore and accept all right so let's do our let's start to set some keyframes okay so uh, our cover is first gonna pop open so we're gonna select the cover and press I to set a rotation key then maybe for about uh, 15 frames I'm going to just rotate it RX to rotate it up and then press I again to say rotation key so you can see the cover open okay next we want to pull out our battery charger so our battery charger right at frame 15 will still remain at this location so I'm going to press I to insert a location keyframe so that means from 0 to 15 it's going to stay there then once the case uh, is open, maybe it's going to hang on a little bit longer. Maybe uh, I'm going to grab this keyframe. Okay, right now, this time I can show you how you can set. You can grab this uh, keyframe. Now, when you see a connected keyframes, it means that there is no action happening. The the value is the same. Okay, so then after that, I want the uh, the battery charger to fly out until it's in the center. So press G followed by Y, then pull it out. Okay, maybe at this location and then press I and then set a location key. So now we can see the animation happening. The hatch opens, the cover opens, and then the, the battery charger comes out. Okay. And then we need the solar panel to come out as well. So the solar panel will come out after the uh the charger has uh, stopped so I think the charger can still move further a bit so let me just press G followed by Y yeah around this location then now I'm going to select the bones the armature I'm going to animate the armature so as the charger comes out around around 80 frames I'm going to set a location key first right and then as the charger comes to a rest then maybe at 120 frames the solar panel G Y will come out and then I will press I to set a location keyframe okay so now I can see the animation coming out like that and then maybe at frame 120 I'm going to activate post mode and then I'm going to select all the bones okay you can just drag to select all the bones and then you can press I to set a rotation key all right, so now I want the rotation to happen within two seconds. So, uh, so two seconds will be 25, 25, 50 plus 20. So you will end at 170. So I will select this and these two bones, not the bone number one, but actually, sorry, bone zero, but bone one and two. Then I'm going to enable this individual origins. Okay, and then I'm going to rotate. And both of them actually will rotate at the same time until it is flattened like so and then I can press I and set a rotation key okay so now it's closed go in see the timeline is gonna open like that all right so now I'm gonna reposition my camera a little bit so I can see everything Okay, so you can see the position of my my solar charger right it's not aligned to the uh the cable so we have to select the hook and then we have to manually plug it in right now i can't select because i'm still in the uh, post mode so i need to go to object and then i'm going to select the uh the empty of the plug okay and then i'm going to keyframe this okay so we're going to come out of the charger we open up the solar panel and it's 170 and then maybe I'm going to set a position key at for the locator at 170 and then maybe at 180 it moves to the side G for by X just move it until it is aligned okay, for this I need to move my camera a bit closer G followed by Z G followed by X G followed by Z I just want to make sure that it is Okay, you can also use the move move tool to move it into place. 
Okay, so there's not enough subdivisions on this uh, spline, so you can see that the uh, the cable is moved out a little bit. So let me try to fix that by going to edit mode for the curve and then right mouse click and subdivide it. Okay, so if I subdivide it, I should be able to uh, attach another hook. Okay, I see whether I can attach another hook. Okay, now there should be another extra vertex over here. Okay, there's another. Okay, I need to select these two vertices here. The right mouse can subdivide. Ah, now I got an extra vertex which I can move so that I have more flexibility. So go back to now. Because of the new vertex, there is no hooks, right? I need to attach a new hook to it. So press uh, go to edit mode, control H, and then hook it to another new object. And then I can now just move this. Well, on second thought, I think uh, I should have added this extra hook early on. So in order to not have this uh, animation mess up, maybe perhaps I can uh, have the uh, solar panel move more straight to the line here. So I'm going to undo what I've done. I should not should not have subdivided that. Okay, And we'll try to fix it by changing the movement of the solar panel. So the solar panel will come out maybe it will stop right about I'm gonna stop right at uh, gonna stop where it is aligned at the the plug okay, just before the plug okay so I don't have to do much for animation in fact let me just push it back a little bit and then this connector have it pre-aligned all right so i'm going to set a key here i set location and then this one i'm going to delete away this location okay so now the i'm going to set a new position keyframe for this so press i location so that the solar panel will come pre-aligned with the the plug okay so it's going to open at frame 170 and then I'm going to animate this guy. Okay, I'm going to set another location key here. Then after that, have it move to the side and then plug in to charge. Okay, just have to make sure that it is aligned. Okay, I'm just eyeballing this here. Okay, go back to shaded mode to see. I think this is good enough so I'm gonna press it I set a location keyframe okay other details like the LED or other details on uh, like textures uh, text um, this one you have to do it yourself okay you can refer to the example that I did okay, for the cover right right now I notice the cover right there's a bunch of gaps here because when I created the solidify uh, I did not fill this area up so I'm gonna fix this really quickly it's like these two edges and then uh, we're gonna press uh, right mouse click and then bridge can we bridge them okay we can use the loop tools to bridge okay so the bridge is a little bit off I'm gonna try and play the twist until it straightens up like that yes okay so I can fix this one same for the cover I'm going to select and go to edit mode go to edge mode then I'll select this edge, shift alt select this edge, then right mouse click and then apply a bridge. And yeah, it works fine. So at least now my uh, cover looks looks nicer. My carrying case rather. And uh, I think we are almost ready to render. So you have your uh, video demonstration of how to use this product. You have the charger coming up with the battery. So in my other animation, I have the actually the batteries appearing and I also animated the uh, case opening and closing. So I will leave that for you guys to figure out, right? And I think we can render our animation. And in order, I think this demonstration has run long enough. Um, I'm going to keep this short. So I'm going to end the rendering at frame one, 190 instead. So I'm going to go to the printout. 
go to frame 190 and I'll be using the EV renderer to render so uh, I'm rendering at this frame so it should be very fast and also um, I'm going to go to the film under here film and if I were to render it right now if I press F12 and render this this is what you get and you can see the lighting is pretty bad and we need to bring in a HDR lighting source to light our environment so we almost uh, overlook that area so click on the world properties click on your color color background dot here and choose a, an environment texture okay so click on open navigate to your uh, blender uh, you can go and copy out these uh, blender environmental files okay for example in blender installation file data file folder in studio lights and world all these files right you can copy it to a location which you can access easily for me uh, I place it in my uh, work folder because I tend to use these a lot to, to use as a lighting source so or you can download uh, 360 HDRs right from uh, online sources so uh, I'm going to use my blender location versions I actually placed it over here and then I'm going to use I'm going to put it in the this time maybe I'm going to put it in interior okay and then I'm going to open up the image right now you can't see any result so in order to see uh, what the environment looks like you have to turn on to rendered look and then you can see the your objects are now being rendered by the image or at least being lit up by the uh, HDR image so if I press F12 to render you can see that now it, it looks uh, much much better okay and uh, we can continue to render this but if you do not want to see the background right you have to go to the scene options under the film category and uncheck or rather check transparent so whatever you render you'll be seeing this instead okay so in my rendering output I'm rendering to uh, PNG and I'm rendering all these 190 frames so I'm gonna hit render right now okay, you can go to render and then click on render animation and it will start to render everything up frame by frame and because we are using EV uh, the rendering speech should be quite fast now as usual um, you can spend time to uh, model out a nicer looking carrying case if you wish And I'll expect this to be fairly fast. Uh, let me just pop up my phone calculator and see how long this takes to render. So you can see that the average rendering time is about, let's see. Actually 0 0.5, about half second. So 0 0.5 seconds times Oh, it's just gonna take about a couple minutes so we'll just wait for the rendering to finish now you can see that I missed out a lot of other details like, uh, like the copper contacts for the batteries and the LEDs and even the uh, the logos okay or text so for that uh, I'll leave that for you guys to figure out And you can see there's some uh, animation issues here. Okay, there's clipping going on. Okay, but I will not be fixing this. Otherwise, uh, the rendering is going to take some time. So you need to put in an extra keyframe to make sure that the uh, solar panel come out without uh, clipping the carrying case. Okay, so it's going to come out, and then the uh, solar panel is going to open. So remember, this is only one uh, design example. There are many different uh, types of, uh, okay, we've got some clipping here going on. There are many other designs uh, of these solar chargers out there. And some only comes with one panel. So if you do not want to bother with the uh, creating this fancy folding panels, or the one that I which I have 
three panels in my uh, other attempt okay then you can maybe just uh, create something that is simpler okay for those of you who find it a little bit challenging okay or if you want to create this folding one instead of this uh, rigging method you can actually just uh, parent two planes together with the uh, pivots adjusted at the corner so you don't have to deal with bones all right so our animation uh, the renders has do been done so now we want to assemble it to a video so click on this plus sign here go to video editing and click on video editing and then we're going to bring in the render image sequence so go and apply at a image sequence strip then navigate to the folder containing the rendered sequences okay, so mine is charger so i'm going to select the charger frames i'm going to scroll down holding down the shift and select only the charger frames i do not want to select the other frames and then add image strip okay and then you can have it okay make sure your timeline is at frame one so that you will bring it nicely in okay so now you can see if we render this as a video there will be a uh, transparent background here so that's not what we want we want to create a constant color background so you can add a color add color and then we're going to put the color below and then drag until we can show the color so this color i'm going to use a brighter color maybe a like a light blue color like what i did for the previous one and if you may if you want to experiment you can also put in titles i won't show you how to do that but you can actually can put in text and all sorts of things so you can do like instructions and all that okay it's so like first take the charger out then take and unfold the solar panel and then after that plug it in and charge your batteries like things like that text uh, to follow that so once you've done all that you are ready to render it out as a video so in your output this time change it into a ffmpeg video and scroll down uh, under the encoding instead of the mastroshka you want to put it either in avi or quicktime or depending on your uh, assignment requirements i'm going to put it as avi and then i'm gonna once you're done give it a name okay uh, i think the original name is fine okay because you're going to give an extension of dot avi and then we are ready to render the video so just click on render and check the resolution i think the requirement resolution is much lower but i'm just gonna leave it at this full resolution and then i'm gonna render the animation okay this time it will be slightly faster okay it's literally like two or three frames per second because there's no more rendering involved it's just uh, assembling still images into a video Okay, so our video is now done. So if you go over and check, we have our video rendered. Okay, I will open it up with another viewer. And you can see now it's playing at 25 frames per second. And it shows the procedures in connecting and setting it up. So I know this is a very long video. Uh, hopefully the information presented here will help you to complete your assignment okay but please try to do some variations in your designs of your uh, solar charger and remember you can actually make it simpler than the one that i have all right so okay this is uh, this is the end of the demonstration i guess so maybe i'll show you my version again so this is my version so you can see mine has more bones involved and then you can see the more details that i placed on the uh, okay so this is the resolution that you guys should be rendering uh, according to your assigns okay so hopefully this is helpful and uh, yeah just try to complete everything and hand it in within the deadline okay so i'll end the video right now